Hi, I'm Peter Haddock and today I'm outside Aylesbury on a really, really important project for the autonomous journey that we're going to take in the UK when it comes to EVs. Yes, we're on an autonomous journey in the construction industry, but why we're stood here with Derek Pierce of LF Pierce and Son is we're on a testing track, aren't we, Derek? Yeah, the first proving track to be built in the UK in the last 50 years. So this proving track is something special because it's all about EVs, it's all about autonomy, and it's going to be really, really crucial for us to getting that transition right, isn't it, Derek? What are we building here? So basically, it's covering 200 acres of, of site. Um, we are basically building every single junction and uh, road you could encounter in the UK, whether it be a roundabout, a T-junction, elevated section, anything that you encounter, we're trying to replicate. They are using the latest technology, so 3D machine control from Trimble on the site here. I was talking to Derek earlier, and one of the crucial things about anything when you're using machine control, yes, is accuracy. Yes, it's moving Earth once and moving it well. But it's about getting the models right, isn't it, Derek, in the first place? Exactly that right. If you can't get the models right, you can do all the digging in the well, but it won't be correct. And you're saying to me earlier that this, and that I'm super impressed with this, everyone, that you personally have learned how to create the models within the Trimble connected community that you can put into your own dozer, like Lucinda here, um, that you're operating. That, that's a, that's a, a lot of work that you've had to do yourself, Derek. Yeah, well, we, we've, yeah, there's three of us that basically learn what, we, what to do uh, in Trimble Business Centre. Uh, we've learned how to tidy up drawings that come into us uh, and then effectively convert it into a format that's usable um, and gives us surfaces that are accurate and correct for tarmac when they come and do the final finishing. And the other important thing about that is obviously we know, Derek, on the earthworks of any project, this is an old World War II airport um, called Oakley. And what you'll discover is this, when you start digging, there's all sorts of things underground, isn't there? And, and you really have had uh, a lots of different elements to deal with. Tell me about it. Well, we've been quite, quite lucky so far. We haven't found any unexploded bombs or anything <laughs> quite as bad as that yet. But we're, you know, every day we're encountering different soil types, um, different spoil that's been thrown in there. When they created these, these runways, they basically just bulldozed all of the soil out the way to the side threw the concrete down and then everything that was left was just pushed over the top and it's subsequently been farmed over the last sort of 80 years, 60, 80 years. Um, so it's all got effectively mixed up. So as we dig, we're encountering all sorts of different things. And this is why it's important that the ripper here is on Lucinda because the team have actually got different compaction levels and all sorts, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're finding that you can be one minute in some sandy loam, next minute you're in some horrible looking boulder clay. And the other thing that you've done is not just put 3D machine control on this dozer, you've also put it on your excavator fleet as well. Tell me about that. So the excavator, excavators all run Trimble. They're predominantly using the, the Trimble um, earthworks. Um, you know, all the guys are trained up on it. Uh, we, we basically know where our finish levels are and then we can apply offsets to get to our, our levels. So dig out levels and stone up levels. And what's interesting about that, folks, is they're also using a steel wrist on one of the machines as well. The team here have got to do some really clever things and get some really clever levels. You're talking about saying an autonomous vehicle is going to be on this site here. You've got to have cambers, you've got to have flyovers, you've got to have roundabouts, and they're all got to be matching the way in which those cars and vehicles will actually see in the real world, haven't they? Exactly that, yeah. So we've, we've got to basically replicate everything that you see in the UK roads, except probably the potholes, if we're being <laughs> honest. But, um, no, we've got, to, we've got to encounter side cambers, we've got to look at longitude, latitude, everything, everything that goes with it. So we're creating some really hard cambers here on some of the bends, which then will then even out to level and then go to the opposite camber, which obviously creates problems from a conventional excavator, which is where the 3D and the steel wrist comes into its own. Yeah, and that's combining all of the sort of latest technologies together there. And also, you know, we were talking earlier about your team. 
You've got a great operator team here, LF Pierce. They've been, you, have been with you for some time now, haven't you? And basically, that team is all working together, isn't it, to, to find the solution? Very much so. We're like a, like a family here. Everyone knows what everyone's doing. Um, they're very keen to embrace the latest technology. Um, and they've all got a real passion for this project because it's, it's, it's the first one in the UK, so everyone's excited about it. And one of the things you'll hear, the, the, the dumpers coming up behind us now because it's a busy site, this here. But one of the things that we've also got to consider here is um, actually how this is developed in phases, haven't we? So we're developing a phase and then that's being tarmacked by tarmac. Uh, and they're using the machine control as well, aren't they? Precisely that. So there's been monuments that have been placed all, all the way around the site with accurate coordinates and then we're then using all of those monuments for machine control. So that means the team here are creating, they're digging, they're exploring, they're great in the levels, tarmac's coming in using those levels, using your models, then we're creating the surfaces and we're building this out. And it's a, it's a big project, you've been on it for a while now. The Shoes project, we've been on this since March time. Um, we foresee this to be about two year, another two years construction because it is in various phases. The first first real big phase for us is to get the main track in and get that earning money for the firm behind it which is Idiada. And so it's over to the team here on site with LF Pierce. They're just up the road. They won this contract because they did some enabling works and the customer was so impressed. And that is a credit to your team. And I think the other thing that Derek really focuses on is working with local suppliers. So we've got other local suppliers of the ADTs here and other compaction equipment. It's, it's a real teamwork, family orientated project, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, I, I, I use suppliers that use my morals. You know, I'll pick up the phone 24 hours a day, seven days a week if necessary. And I like to use other firms that follow those, those sort of ethics. And so autonomous cars drive 24 hours a day. This site's not necessarily working 24 hours a day, okay. but it's certainly really busy here. And this is the road to autonomy. And who knows, we might even get some autonomous larger vehicles onto the site here when it's finished. But this is a fantastic project done by a family run business here using machine control, using the right working practices and ethics and also what the team has done here is they've recognized that actually they can utilize their other skills as well. Derek not only is he an engineer, not only is he an operator of a dozer, not only does he know how to do all of the machine control and run the team here, he's also a qualified plant fitter and so therefore you've concentrated on using equipment that is, uh, is basically giving it a sort of second life. So you're buying equipment in the used market and you're even selling it there, aren't you? Exactly that, yeah. We, you know, we like to run the, the cat dozers, we like to run them up till the, we feel as though we've done as much as we can with them and maintain ourselves we know them inside out um, yeah we don't like going and spending a lot of money on, on something that might not necessarily do the hours so if we can utilize it during those hours and it's cost effective for us it's a winner and also they've teamed up with a team at Aztrak that I know quite well and, and they do use the, the team at Finning UK and Ireland uh, if they've got any major problems. But Derek, that really is um, a great way of getting best value out of the equipment that's on the market. And also Lucinda's here because you sold another one of your um, dozers, didn't you, um, through Ritchie Brothers recently? Yes, yeah, we did. Its predecessor that went up to, went up to Maltby um, and then this one then came in its place. And the team was so clever with this one, they did a private purchase. They dropped the one off at Maltby at the Ritchie Brothers Yard uh, to go into the timed auction online there and picked uh, Lucinda up on the way back, didn't you? Exactly that. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, what a great story it is here to look at how a local firm is really making a global impact here in the UK. And uh, it will be fantastic to see all the cars and vehicles whizzing around this track as we take on the road to autonomy. Thanks very much, Derek. No problem, thank you.